In this video, we are going to talk about how you can use objective food science effectively. Hey, how are you doing today? Welcome back to the channel. This is Arif Irshad and you are watching Food Tech Simplified, where I make simple and easy to understand lectures, videos and tutorials for the students of food science and technology. So if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon as well so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. So the tip that I'm going to share with you today not only applies to this specific book, but to any kind of objective book that you may come across in your studies. But before I share the tip with you, let me share something about this 10th edition. Uh, about two months ago, I did a review on the 9th edition of this book. And a few days later, the 10th edition, this one, this book was released. So uh, in the 10th edition, Sanjeev sir, the author of this book, has corrected a lot of mistakes and I really appreciate that. And not only he has added the past year papers for CFTRI, GATE, uh, ICAR, BHU, but also he has added three new sections, that is horticulture, home science and advances in food processing. And again, I would like to mention that this is one-stop solution for practicing the questions that are related to CFTRI, uh, MSc entrance exam or ICER, NET exam or GATE exam. All right, so let us talk about how you can use this book effectively. So usually there are two categories of students. The first category, they have ample amount of time for preparation. Uh, let's say that they started preparing for a specific exam, for CFTR exam, let's say, uh, one or two year in advance. And then there is second category who has shorter amount of time as compared to the first category. Maybe they have six months or maybe they have three months. Maybe they are, uh, maybe they have some conditions or situations. Maybe they are involved in some kind of job or something. So that's why they have shorter amount of time and that's completely okay. So uh, I'm going to focus on both of these categories, how the students of both categories can excel in their respective exams. So first of all, let me talk about the first category. That means the category of the students who have ample amount of time, one or two year for preparation. So if you are a student from the first category, that means you have ample amount of time, then you should not start with this book. You don't have to start with objective food science, rather you should start with the textbooks, with the textbooks such as Food Science by Norman Potter. And why is that? Because obviously you need to first of all focus on concepts. See, the textbooks such as uh, Food Facts and Principles by Shakuntala Mane or Food Microbiology by Frazier. I'm going to do a book review on this one. Uh, so these textbooks, these are usually and obviously these are for practicing the concepts. But the objective food science, the books like these, these are for practicing the concepts that you have studied. So this is the book that you have to use for practicing, for self-assessment. And these are the books that you have to use for understanding the concepts. All right, so once you have understood the concepts, you take this book and you start solving the questions. So uh, how are you going to do that? So first of all, let's say that you have just studied food chemistry and you want to assess yourself for food chemistry section, for the concepts of food chemistry. So there is a dedicated uh, section for that, the section three, or you can say chapter three for food chemistry. And under that, there are many questions, objective type questions for chemistry of foods, for molecular biology, for human nutrition and vitamin and so on. And after each section in this book, the answers have been mentioned. Usually what most of the students do and even I do sometimes is that I just take one question at a time, I solve a question, and uh, after I have solved the question, I immediately go back and check the answer, whether it is right or wrong. And then I go to another question and then check again the answer. So this not only wastes your time, but this is also very ineffective. What is the effective way? So let's say that you dedicate some questions for self-assessment. Let's say that you have dedicated 30 questions. So you are going to solve 30 questions in a limited amount of time. Let's say that you allot 15 minutes to solve 30 objective questions, right? So make sure you have a stopwatch or something like that so that you can actually uh, measure the time. Actually, you can see that what is the time right now and start the stopwatch from your mobile phone. You can use that and start solving the questions without checking the answers. After you have completed the dedicated questions, the 30 questions from this book, or you can set any amount of questions. Uh, I'm just taking 30 as an example. So let's say that you have completed the 15 minutes or you have completed the 30 questions. Now you go back and check the answers. 
And once you do that, you will understand, you will realize that what are the questions that you actually had the answer for and what are the questions that you didn't know or what are the questions that were mistaken. So in that way, you will be able to assess yourself. In that way, you will be, under, you will be able to know that where you exactly stand. Now, it is possible that you might do some mistakes. Uh, it is possible that you tick the incorrect answer and that is completely fine. If there are questions for which you have ticked the incorrect, incorrect answer, then you take that question, you go back to the textbook and understand that concept very well. And what you need to do, you need to just scribble down some short notes, some bullet points for that specific concept so that you can recall the mistake that you have done. So this method will not only enable you to memorize a concept for a longer duration of time, but this will also allow you to understand where you stand. This will also allow the self-assessment. And now let us talk about the second category of the students who have shorter amount of time for preparation. Maybe they have six months, maybe they have three months or so on. So if you only have few months for preparation, then you don't, then you should not start with these textbooks. Rather, you should directly start with this objective food science book. Aaj biceps nikal jayenge. Obviously, I'm not asking you to abandon these books immediately. These books will come in handy for sure. I will get to them in just a bit. So the method of solving the questions from this book for the second category students, that means for the students who have shorter amount of time, is going to be the same as that of the first category students. So that means the method that I just told you, uh, the method where I allotted 15 minutes for 30 questions, and after I had completed all the questions, I, after I had ticked all the questions, later I go at the back of the section and check the answers and do a self-assessment where I was right and where I was wrong. So that method is going to be the same for the second category students as well. In this scenario for the second category students, you don't have to start with the, uh, with the textbooks. You have to start with this book directly because you have shorter amount of time. And again, you will also have to uh, maintain some short notes, some bullet points or some tabular form uh, notes based on the mistakes that you have done while assessing yourself from this book. And why is that? Because obviously maintaining some short points for the mistakes that you have done are very important, not only for recalling the mistake that you have done, but also for self-assessment and also for the revision prior to the examination. So seven days prior or 14 days prior to the date of examination, it is advisable that you practice the bullet points, that you practice the short notes that you had prepared from the mistakes that you have done during the self-assessment. So this was the practical tip that I wanted to share with you. I hope that you implement this in your own preparation strategies, in your own studies, and I hope that you succeed in your respective examinations. Before I go, I have one short message for all the students who are watching this video right now. So some of you might be aware that CFTRI or ICER do not release their question papers. And that is what makes uh, publishing this book extremely challenging for uh, the authors. While the students are preparing for CFTRI exam or ICER exam, they are very hungry for past paper questions. And when it comes to giving back uh, when it comes to donating these questions when they actually appear, they just completely forget it. They don't think about the next generation. And it is very important that you share the questions, share the questions that you have attempted, share the questions that you have seen in the question paper when you have appeared for the examination so that uh, publishing of this book can be sustained. So let me tell you the mechanism uh, behind this book. So the students who appear in the examinations, what they do, they... After they have taken the examination, they get back to their home, they get back to their respective homes, and they, uh, from their memory, they just jot down some of the questions, maybe 10 questions, maybe 20 questions, or maybe just the hints of the questions. And then they send it to Sanjeev sir. And this is how Sanjeev sir compiles the past year questions in this book. So it is a kind request to please share the questions as much as possible so that the next generation can also benefit from the questions that you have shared, that you are going to share. You can share these questions via DM on my Instagram handle that is foodtech underscore simplified or you can mail these questions to foodtechsimplified at gmail.com. So this was it for today. Let me know down in the comments if you have any kind of doubts, queries, feedback, grammatical mistakes that you want to point out. I will make sure that I reply to most of you. I'll see you next time. Class dismissed.